Hey guys, it's Austin here. Um, today I'm uh, I'm a little bit I I don't want to say if nervous is the right word, but I think it's an incredibly complex subject to talk about the crucible passive trees. Um, it's very very RNG dependent, and it does make a lot of sense. So I'm not the best <laughs> graphics designer. Um. Yeah, it's uh, just bear with me. Uh, in this video, I'm gonna tell you what I learned, how I've been able to make two really good trees with four nodes, what worked for me, what really doesn't work for me, and how you can maximize your luck. You have to get lucky. You can do many things correct and still just get unlucky, and then have to go again. But I have been able to make two bows with really good trees. Um, this one with global attack damage, attack speed, omni, and a good, um, yeah, good force. So I have a really good bow for me now that I'm happy with. And then in the video today, I uh, replicated it by making another really good tree with boop, boop, uh, boop, boop, which is very, very good. And also yesterday on my stream, while I spent eight hours going from zero knowledge to making my first bow, and now I was able to make a second bow, um, by following the rules that I'm going to tell you, and I'm also going to show you some bad examples of what doesn't work. Um, hopefully, I can help you get to making some four node items without wasting seven, eight, nine hours in despair and also not ending up using as much currency as I did. So, at first, I'm going to open up paint. It might fast bang you. So, if you're like in a really dark room, your eyes are tired, this is a warning. Um, there you go. So what I was doing yesterday basically is if I was trying to get mod number one, that's cool. Then if I wanted to get mod number two or mod number three, I would get either something that was here, here, or here, right? It doesn't really matter. And then I would allocate mod number one on my item. And on the second item, it was, you know, it would be this plus either direction. It didn't really matter. And then I would leave the second item scoured and hoping that I would keep my number one that I had allocated. And then the number, hoping to get the number two. And then, you know, let's just say that I have um, these two allocated now. Actually, we can just make it different, right? We can, uh, let's say I have these two allocated now. Then on the next time I would try and do something, I would uh, either get the third mod that I wanted over here, over here. And I wouldn't pay attention to much else. So on, let's just... Um, Say on the other item, the item that I bought, it could look like this. Boom. Uh, boom. 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 It's a little bit confusing, but that's okay. I'm basically just trying to make a point here that when I was going yesterday for a mod up here, I would just get any item that could go like basically any direction, and it didn't really matter too much, but that is really, really bad. Um,. And this is where everything gets a lot more annoying. You can't just blindly focus on getting the mod that you want, okay? So the best way I can explain it, and now I probably confused many others, and I also confused myself. The best way you can do it is this. So let's just say we have an item with two mods on. Um, you want it to break. You need a clean break here. If you want to get these two mods on to a new item, you need it to not go any further. Um, so to describe this, and this is rough, I'm sorry. So let's just say I have an item, right? We're going to make this pink. I have an item that goes like this. You have made your number three and your number four, the two decide much that you want. So you want to get number three and number four. Onto your other base that has number one and two. What you have to do is you have to allocate. Oops. <laughs> you have to allocate one, two, three, four on the other item. Does that make sense? So you have to have a base like this that goes one, two, three, four. That's good so far, right? Um, let's say you have these two mods on your current item and your one and two is bad. The only way that you're gonna be able to hit it is by having a item where you have the two first node allocated that you have and then it needs to not be able to go in this direction at all it's okay if it can go upwards and you don't allocate it but if you have this item here 
where you want to slam your two mods and try and get them over here on your prepared base, um, it's going to go bad for you. So if you have two, let me go in circle, you have two, three, four other lines that it can connect to, even though you don't allocate them, this will highly uh, increase the chances of you destroying your items. And I have a showcase of that. So let me show you uh, an almost successful transfer right now, the what we described. Um, so as we can see here, these two mods are bad. I don't really care about them on a mental build, but I have these two good. So my three and four is good. My one and two is bad. My item here is a one, two, and then it breaks. There's nothing on the other side. I'm hoping to keep these two mutts in this item, and then, you know, the other mutts in the other item. So, I put the split base on top, the base that I uh, want at the bottom. And now this outcome turns out almost as we wanted, but not exactly. So, I get one, three, and four good. So, this item is almost finished. I would have to allocate these four nodes. And then try and find a new base with um, one, two, good, and then a break, and then go again. But instead, I have an example of showing what happens if you have the further lines. And my experience from destroying so many items yesterday, I would delete many, many imprints, and it felt terrible. So I replicated this, deleting my money for you guys. You are welcome. This is, um, yeah, I did this this morning before, uh, during this video. So you can see here, there's a one, two, but it doesn't break. It keeps going in this direction. Right? So you have one, two, doesn't break, and then see what happens when you allocate with the same item as I allocated with before. It turns out horrible. And I don't recommend doing it, but I wanted to showcase how poorly it can go. Now, we only have one node, and the item just broke. It's literally gone. It, uh, it didn't keep anything, it doesn't even resemble anything that we were working with before, and it's just destroyed your item. So, that is definitely a terrible, terrible mistake. So, since I had my 3 and 4 good, well, I had 1, 3, and 4 good on one item, right? Um, I decided that... Let me just erase some of these things. Uh, where I was at is, um, I had to get a new bow, I had to get a new bow base, and I wanted to make my 1 and 2 good. So I, I made a new fracture base. And I made my 1 and 2 good. But on my other item. This is where it comes uh, a little bit complicated, right? My other item was like boop, 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 boop. In that line. And I got unlucky. So when I made a new item, it was a thicket bow. Uh, I had my two nodes. And they went up and up. So I had to make an entire new base. Um... For my 3 and my 4, which I will show in the next video. So, I end up with uh, some new bases now. But, um, I'll describe how I make the thicket base. But now I have a thicket base like this. And, um, then I need to get a base where I can connect to these two and have a break at the end. Um, and the way I buy my 3 and my 4, I just get them from the trade side. I don't know if there's a good way to get 3 and 4 onto the items. But I just, I buy them from the trade side and then I split them. And then I try and slam them onto the items. It's uh, it's not easy. But um, yeah. So here I can show I have a new base. Um, I didn't get my 1 and 2 down here. Where I wanted them. But like I said. I just had to get a new 3 and 4 base. The 3 and 4 base are bought for 100k absorbs. So here is a 3 and 4 base. That doesn't have any allocated nodes. That like unbreaks right. So this is fine. As long as you don't allocate these nodes. It doesn't break the item. You just want to make sure that um, in the direction you're going, um, there's nothing at the end, basically, right? You want to make sure that when you allocate these nodes, there's nothing behind it. That is what increases the chance of uh, destroying the item. Having this is okay. Uh, that's the only way I can say it. But here, I have my 3-4 base, and I'm connecting with my 1-2. There is one thing that's very frustrating to me that I will try to also go over. This is like the perfect item. Okay, to imprint on. It barely has a passive tree. I got insanely lucky with this. And there's no great way to replicate it. I do recommend... Um, let's just uh, 
we'll talk about the geodes later, but I'll, I'll I'll explain how to get this on an item. So you have to stay until I talk about that. But this is like the perfect form where the passive tree is tiny and you just have the notes that you want. I will show an example of where I have the notes that I want, but my tree is big and it then breaks the item. And also explain how to get to here. But yes, I have the one too on a small tree. This is perfect. This is, from my experience, impossible to fail almost. And these two are good as well. Let's slam it and see what happens. This is like perfect scenario of increasing your RNG, okay? This is as good as it gets. And I've pretty much been two for two with having similar trees to this. You can, of course, get unlucky. But me, and I've seen three other people in my stream, have success with this. And I hit the perfect tree here with the with this method, right? Um, let me just see what's in this video. It's... Uh, here, this is how I would make a 1 and 2, but I don't think I should do it on this base. I wanted to test it for this video's purpose. You can see how I have a fracture bow here. Um, I should have scoured the tree. Let's just talk about this right now. So, when you come to the geodes, there are three different mods that matters on the geodes. One is if you type in cell, you do not want to use anything that has cell in the name, okay? Because it makes it so when you forge trees, it gives you more likely chances to have items that have cell options in there. And that can delete your item. Okay, so you want to make sure you don't have that. And then there's another one that's called Corrupt. And um, here it says, weapons and shields found have 10% chance to... No, that's not it. <laughs> Weapon and shields found have a chance to be corrupted with an implicit. I don't know. There's, there's one of these with the forge. I can corrupt it, and I just stay away with anything that says anything with found corrupted in the map. Um, but it's, it's corrupted implicit. Um, can I type implicit here? I should have some of them. Eh. Okay, that's not good. Let me just uh, find the right one for you, so... You know what the mod is called, because it's really, really important that you invite in. So, crucible, corrupt, implicit. Um, contains the forge and bank crews with passive skill, including a unique or corrupted item. How's this? Container? Huh. I don't know what the mod is called, but there's something that can make your weapons corrupt. And I've been staying away from uh, the ones that says weapons shields found to have a 10% to... Heck. What is the mode called? Maybe you can type it in the comments, because I'm a bit lost now. But I have seen many very good weapons that can have a corrupted implicit. And I swear there's a line with something that using the forge will give you a corrupted implicit or something on your weapon. So you have to be a little bit uh, wary of those. Um, this is bothering me. I can't find it. I'm sorry. I think I'm searching for it wrong. Uh, forge... Hold on. Forge. Corrupt. Forge items are corrupted with an implicit. Uh, implicit, I'm sorry. That's, that's, that's the line that's bad. You do not want to use this, okay? <laughs> uh, forged items are corrupted. If you find any of these, don't use them. They will break and destroy your item. So you want to make sure you don't use forged items are corrupted, and you want to make sure you don't use, uh, turns into the selling currency. So if you filter those out, you can use your geodes. But that leads me to the fourth one, is remove. Um, let's see if this one have it. Contains a firmness that removes a crucif crucible passive skill tree from a non-unique item. And what I mean by this is good is... Um, I was trying to tinker with this bow, and it had two lines, and I'll show it later. I should have kept deleting it until it got small and replicated the thicket bow that we had that was successful. So you basically want to take your base, because this is a base that's good, right? It has tier 1 attack speed, I crafted some other stuff on it. This is the one I was trying to make a tree for. But I wanted to try and showcase what happens if you don't keep removing the tree and adding them and trying to get like a good base with as small as tree as possible. You have a pretty good chance of uh, breaking it. But you should use the gears that keeps removing the tree until you have basically just a few nodes or only one line that goes in the direction that you have your 3 and 4 ready. Or prepare this item to only go in one line small and then get a 3 and 4 that can connect to that line. So basically, 
what I'm trying to advise you guys to do that I didn't do in this item where I've been unlucky is you want a base that goes like this or this, right? You only want two lines at most. And then you want to get the one and two you want on that item. And then you then need to find a base or make a base with the three and four that then connects to that, right? But you only want to have a two line in the beginning and not like, as, as little as possible else. The bigger the tree is, the harder it gets for you to craft in your base that you want your final tree on. So keep using the remove passive geode until you have a small tree. Then fix the one and two. Keep the tree small if you want to maximize your chances of getting the notes that you want. So I have the mistake here on the bad merge. So I can just show you that this passive tree is a little bit too big. And also it has conflicting mods, which I've seen other people uh, make this tree together. So I'll have this mod on the item here that has an okay one and two. This is like a big fire damage one. It's not the best, but it has the attack speed that I want. And then I'm merging onto another item. But this item also have the uh, elemental explicits. So my advice here is do not have two of the same mod on an item when allocating together and also try and keep the tree as small as possible. Like this base here, I could just keep scouring until I had something better. But I am, I did this to test and now this item is not so good. I think one, because I let the tree be too big and two, because it had the same mud twice. Um, those are going to be my advices for this. <laughs> for making a good bow. I've been able to make two good trees on this bow and the thicket bow. It's very confusing. Um, to sum it up, your base tree needs to be as small as possible. You never want to slam on anything that has more muds than you want. It needs to be a break in the line that you're trying to proceed. When you're slamming your 1 and 2 with your 3 and 4, you have to, you know, have them allocated. And then you just have to pray, man, and keep going. And it's a, it's a little bit rough. And explaining this video has taken me 17 minutes. And if you watch this and you're still confused, like, I'm, I'm confused trying to explain it. I'm sorry, man. I, this is the best I can do. Um, I slept on it. I thought about it. I made this video to try and replicate what I did yesterday to get my bow. And it is what it is. Okay, guys. If you don't get it, I don't blame you. I have a hard time explaining it much better than I did now. Uh, due to my lack of um, graphical skills and way of articulating words. But if you can get a good format together without spending... A lot of time and a lot of money like I did. I hope this can help you a little bit. And if not, I'm fucking sorry for I I'm sorry for wasting your time. <laughs> I'm sorry for wasting your time, man. This is uh this is a rough one, guys. But uh at least the people in my stream they 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 were managing to uh to make some weapons using this method. And uh they were struggling before and so I hope a few of you guys will also be able to make some cool weapons after watching this. <laughs> and I apologize, this this crucible tree is rough, man. Take care. Good luck with your weapons. And it is what it is, man. <laughs> aye, aye, aye.